Good morning, folks. If you didn't catch yesterday's second upload and the big news on geoengineering, we'll touch on that in a few minutes, but we begin with the sun, weather, earthquakes, and volcanoes. Starting with spaceweathernews.com, we're checking out the last 24 hours on our star. You won't see much movement, no large flashes of solar flares, and no erupting filaments. But when we come to the X-ray flux, we do see a breath of life in the solar flaring. Not much, not scary, but it's something, and it's due to the development of a seemingly complex sunspot group on the Earth-facing disk. While this is not yet capable of making large solar flares, its development should be monitored today to see if the opposite polarity umbra, blue and red, begin to interact. Solar wind here. Purple is the speed, and it's heading down. Earth's magnetic shield is quite calm at the moment. We expect more intense solar wind streams early this coming week from this coronal hole, geomagnetic storms as well, but as for the earthquakes, we're still in a drought. Largest since the Solomon six-pointer struck eastern Indonesia yesterday. Region was on alert, but the magnitude was too low to count. We also have some rare rumbles near Iceland, which reminds us that their volcanoes just went on alert the last month, and a small tremor in a very rare location took down a few structures in Egypt. Surprising. We also saw the Kamchatka Peninsula send up a volcanic eruption yesterday that makes four volcanoes either erupting or on imminent watch from southern Japan up and across into the Aleutian Islands of Alaska. Top weather events hit the United Arab Emirates. Part of the ongoing moisture flow changes on our planet gave far more rain than what they were ready for, flooded much of the low-lying and relevant areas of the country. We'll quickly peek in on the knuckling earth spot low dancing across the states. This one moves towards the coast today while another sneaks in behind it. Top weather alert for today and tomorrow comes to Queensland. While that system to the south is more noticeable and isn't exactly going to be kind, the cyclone coming at Queensland is much more intense, heading due south, and has no chance to miss your coastline. Folks, the second upload yesterday was something I've been waiting for, which we've discussed on the website for years. They're finally stepping out of the shadows and making public notification and acknowledgments of plans to spray the sky. If you didn't see it, no, there is no admissions of past events, and yes, we know you might have been discussing this for a while, but the topic at hand is them taking responsibility. It's all going to be on them now, and both the Guardian and the UN's IPCC are against it. That was a little shocking. The discussion focuses on the tertiary and tangential implications of this mainstream move, but there is a point of confusion. The Guardian article stated that the project was to commence within just weeks, which was a what-the-heck moment for me, starting with water ice and moving up to other compounds by 2022. However, this fact has been called into question with the only other major group covering the topic, MIT, painting a different story all around. They do not take the negative stance on spraying that we saw from the Guardian. The recognition of the negative consequences was not covered like the Guardian did. By the way, if you don't know Captain Chemtrail, that's David Keith right there. Head was squeezed in a press as a child, which explains much of his thought processes. However, what the MIT article did do was push back our worries just a bit in time. They claim the first launch wouldn't be until next year, However, they also state it's straight to the aerosol chemicals that are slightly less friendly than the water vapor we heard about from The Guardian. Folks, that's about all the current coverage that exists on this specific story in the geoengineering world. All I can say is that it's stepping out of the darkness, so perhaps it's time to shelve our emotions and begin calm and fact-based discussions on the topic so that the entire geoengineering opposition doesn't appear to be unstable lunatics. Much appreciated. It's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.